Welcome back to the analyst desk here at the Kiev Major. We are in the grand final. Two down, potentially three more to come. It's the best of five grand finals. And OG and Virtus Pro are tied one apiece. We are going to catch up with our panel once more. They're all back here, of course. Uh, Gods, Molini, and Fogged. We're going to look ahead to uh, draft three uh, in just a moment. It, it seems like with these best of fives, we get our own meta. Mm -hmm. Do you feel it's evolved already with the Terra Blade being on one side and then the other and it's won both games? Or is that not necessarily the key to the victory so far? I think it could definitely be an impact, yeah. I think the that OG... I think that both teams are probably going to do very similar strategies. I think that VP has found their bread and butter. This is similar to what they, we saw them draft in the last like four or five games. I wouldn't see them draft differently. I think the first game they made a huge mistake. Mm. I think the Tusk was the bit, bit weak, and they adjusted with that really well coming into the next game, yeah. grabbing the Sand King, having Lil on a more impact hero. I really liked VP's approach, and OG seemed to have strived more toward this like Monkey King Phoenix dominating team fights with their two supports. And Ben, if saving a mistake or two, this could be 2-0 to VP. Definitely. And that's why we saw them go for the same draft yeah. the second game. But OG didn't change up much either, did they? Even though they lost the early mm. game in both games. Are they going to change draft that this time? Draft-wise, I think it was a lot different because they couldn't play around the egg. Mm. Right. I, I think th when you first phase a Phoenix and your egg gets killed every fight, something went wrong with the draft. Yeah. Uh, I also think that they could potentially ban Darkseer and Mag in the first phase and let Io through instead. And Io, he's like, okay. Decent at team fights, but I think like the Magnus, even though he didn't have big RPs, is still this just mind game that you have to play in each of the team fights. Like, oh god, we can't get RP'd, and the empower on certain heroes like Ursa and Terra Blade widens your uh, hero pool just like CM widens your support pool. Yeah, what would you like to see OG ban out? Magnus Darkseer. Yeah, I thought just that's thought so. Yeah, get rid of those. Yep. And then okay. go for a similar style of play. I think a similar style in the way that they play, or similar draft and style more so a little bit closer to game one i would still yeah. like the uh, medusa instead of the ta in game number uh two i think to give them a little bit more team fight right that's a big thing i think is the the team fight advantage because vp play at this fast pace you need to have strong team fight to defend your towers uh you can't just play for the late game you can't easily get away with these alchemist type picks and fl split push type games because vp are just going to play too fast for you to deal with that very good at it indeed. Uh, while we wait for the players to return to the lobby, they have just started coming back to their booths, and uh, we will get to our third draft very shortly. Let's uh, check in with some more social media questions. Haven't had a chance to do that so far in this uh, grand final. Why do most captains and drafters play the position five role? Ben? As a core player, it's really difficult to make calls in the early game, which I think is when you actually need to be the most uh, vocal on the team because your early game rotations, if you fail that as support, you can just lose the game. Or as cores, they, they are more concentrated on getting last hits and winning the lane, and that requires a lot of concentration. Dota is very uh, intensive on the mind, and you just can't split your brain resources into winning your lane and making the calls. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. I think yeah. it's like it's an important role, but it's the one where you can you can kind of like, you know, take a look, take a step back for a moment at some points, maybe not like every single game, but like in the laning phase and stuff like Ben was saying, you can just like look objectively at the entire game scenario rather than just like a specific moment that you're super concentrated on. Sometimes you see like carries like farming a camp or something and they're like pinging and they're like, don't block my camp. And sometimes the support's just like walking by because it's, they're very concentrated on the overall game plan of the game. And if you like look at other lanes as a core, you're going to miss CS, yeah. which is not good. And every little CS counts, especially at this level, like having your raindrops like one, uh, like 30 seconds earlier even, or you know, getting your bottle like 10 seconds earlier as a mid, like these things have really big impacts. Whereas like if you miss CS as a support, you're probably not getting CS to begin with. You're not hitting creeps. You can just, you're free to look around, check the lanes out, see how things are going and <laughs> be okay. I've always found it very impressive when there are those like mid players who are also the captain and drafter of the team, because that takes a huge amount of concentration and just constant like mechanical skill to like win your lane and also be thinking about the big picture like players like Cuckoo on TNC um, what S4 perhaps used to yep. do with Alliance like that's incredibly tough there's a good reason why S4 kind of stepped away from being the main captain of his team because yep. uh, playing the mid or even off lane role is just so so draining mm. draft three almost underway or is underway one ban already in it's the same as we've had before so we're going to see fine. if they ban the Wisp again. They yep. ban the Wisp. I believe it was actually first over to Darkseer. So if they want to change it up, they can change it up right now. I think yeah. VP will keep the same bans, the Tree Naga. I think these two are actually OG's best heroes right now. So yeah, they do ban the Wisp. So either Mag or Darkseer is going to be left through. Mm -hmm. And there's the Naga. 
Maybe this is where they switch. Maybe this time they hide, they favor the mag a little bit more. Nope. Still the third Still the game Darkseer. in a row with VP on first pick. Yeah. They are no, OG had, OG had first pick the first two. They picked oh, Monkey sorry. King. Yeah, they did Monkey King the oh, first. Okay, yeah. so yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And this time Virtus Pro had Radiant, so... Yeah. They have swapped. They've opened with Mag Warlock all of the games. Warlock's been decent, but I think that's more like a hotly contested hero in between OG and VP. So that you're not necessarily worried about OG taking Mag. If you want Warlock Mag, you pick it in Warlock Mag, not Mag Warlock, yeah. because of OG's preferences. So, so Warlock locked in for the third game in a row. Mm -hmm. VP's played Dire four times in a row. They played two versus IG and two just before. Now they're playing on Radiant. They have played a, a couple on Radiant. It actually doesn't really change their drafting style too much either. They still go for the Ur Ursa, the Roche control with team fight. Stemoji mm -hmm. does take the mag. All right. The old S4, the son of Magnus, was uh, very well known for playing this hero. So that's cool. We haven't, I believe OG hasn't played mag yet. I don't think that they have. Off the top of my head, I'm going to say no. Yeah, they have not played Magnus yet this tournament. So I think it was it was a, a decent gamble by VP, thinking that they could get it again. One time? I don't see any. Yeah, that's just one. Hmm. It was... I, do, yeah, oh. I, do, I don't see mm. any. Actually, no, you're right. Yeah, this yeah. Is, so this it is the first time they played Magnus. Me. I think if you're going in the draft as VP and you have this opener, the Warlock again, and you have first pick, you, you, have, you think with a fairly high probability that they can get Warlock Magnus. But this time... OG, they let the Axe, or Axe is picked in the first phase. It was typically banned by VP themselves because mm -hmm. OG, well, because VP were getting Magnus, so they didn't need an offlane, and then OG were saving their S4 hero to, like, the second phase. So I Axe was getting banned against him. I like this, though. Now they have two kind of, you know, the same concept as before, and one initiator and one counter initiator. So if the mag does go on some uh, in one fight, you're assuming they're going to have melee cores as well. So Axe can get in really disrupt that type of initiation afterwards. If there's a follow-up, he just blinks in, calls with blade mail. Blade mail versus empowered cores as well is extremely powerful. Yeah, that's the point that AUI made. It's, it's the, just the axe with those uh, against Magnus and power carries are really strong as well. Yeah. Maybe they don't have the typical um, melee and powers though, but it's still even good against like the Magnus Terror Blade that we saw VP pull out last game. Mm -hmm. Banning out the Monkey King and the Void. The vo good old Void Phoenix combo with Mag as well. Something we used to see OG run. Not with the Magnus, but the Void and the Phoenix. And Void just a good hero to carry in power now. That was the VP draft where they had the, the Void Phoenix in that second stage with Magnus. So yep. I think VP are like, well, we drafted those heroes. I think that was the draft they Lil described as like, oh, we have these five unbeatable heroes. And they do not want to let them get it. It's also team fight, And that's something where both we're seeing this continuous trend where it's like you want to have that bigger team fight than your opponents. And I think VP are recognizing they're perhaps falling behind if they give up some of these more additional team fight heroes. I like the adjustment from OG2 here. They picked the Phoenix in the first two this time, but now they recognize it's like, okay, the Ursa is actually starting to become a bit of a problem. We have to be able to defend this egg in another fashion. So taking that out, taking the Shadow Fiend too. No one's Shadow Fiend is one of his best, so. I think you can target the Axe with your early game though. Because Axe, he doesn't know who he's going to be matched up against. They pick Axe expecting Magnus to be paired up with those carries, but X mm -hmm. is not particularly good in lane, and he doesn't have a good matchup versus a lot of different heroes. So ET, wow, that's, that's some team fight. Ridiculously strong team fight. <laughs> yeah. Trying to protect the egg, right? Yep. With anything have, that they can. Uh, and I have gone with this out of time before, haven't I? Yeah, Jarex mm -hmm. played it in incredibly well in one of their games. I think it was versus it was versus Faceless, and I, actually yeah. he's played it like two or three times. Yeah. I want to say played it against Thunderbirds. It's been played twice. Okay, it's been twice. And this has always been like an OG hero. If you go back to like the the Crit era, he used to play the Elder Titan for them all the time as well. It's like the battle of who can have more initiation and counter initiation. It seems right now. At least with the first five yeah. heroes. I mean, that'll change when the, the mids, the carries start coming out. Because yeah. that's where you'll look at just actual raw DPS and uh, ma maybe throw out some yeah, magic physical damage cores in the mix. They still might want to go back for something like the Slark, though. Even though Slark's not that good versus Teamfight, I feel like it's very good versus the Magnus and the Phoenix. Uh, but I'm not sure because it could be risky without having a buff up for him with the Empower. But I think most of the other safe lane heroes, like Juggernaut, gets destroyed by... Uh, Magnus, and there's just not that many options that I see for Ramses. I guess Spectre, but Spectre has really big egg problems.
and your pool is also limited because of the Elder Titan in the pool. Not You don't necessarily want to go for Terror Blade, which has been picked in both of the prior games. Yeah. Trying to think of some good egg killers that they could use, but... Troll, I suppose. Yeah. Troll hasn't been banned out. And Ag Legion Commander either. Yeah, Legion is. Not uh, gonna get picked into that, is it? So a life stealer. That can they can remove the fire spirits. He can just rage and walk up and hit the egg. He is a melee hero though, but he doesn't really care too much about other Titan and Phoenix. Mm. He can just kind of walk at both of these heroes, and they do have a deliverer already for him with the axe. And although they do have three anti BKB on OG, uh, three ultimates that stun yeah. slash do something through BKB, I still think life steal is pretty good because you have to expend a lot of stuff to try and keep him in check this game. And it's a Ramsey's life stealer. This mm -hmm. is one of his absolute favorites. Definitely a big change up than the drafts that we were seeing recently, though. At least from these two teams. That's what you were talking about as well. The mini meta that kind of starts to form in the grand finals of these tournaments. I think VP have already seeded that OG have stronger team fight. Ooh. Trying to pick this before it gets banned out, as we've seen in the, the last couple games. Yep. Not able to get that fifth pick storm, and they I think you look at this game and you're like, there's only an axe call to worry about for now. They lifesteal at Warlock are not good heroes versing Storm. Storm is in fact a great initiator to try and start a fight onto that warlock and kind of bring him down before he can even get off a good ultimate. But you don't know what the matchup is. They, they're gonna hope that I guess if he gets counter picked, they've got no tail to be the X factor this game. Yeah, they had last pick though. They could have easily picked it last. I wonder. Well, like two games in a row, Storm was fifth man. Yeah. 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 Fifth. It's a good no one hero. He played Puck before, right? Mm hmm. So it could be a possibility having some silence and lockdown versus the Storm Spirit to deliver as well for Life Stealer. But ah. they go back for his Dragon Knight. This is a, kind of like a throwback to when they were, they play this a lot in Boston and pre Boston. It gives them a building hitter as well, so they're kind of feeling like that was their big problem, at least in their first game. Maybe that's what they've identified. They get the Terror Blade the second game, and now they get a Dragon Knight to at least kind of force objectives. They are a team that's, I mean, we've seen them, I think, win, I yeah. think, 95% of the early game that they've played. So this is one that just lets them to carry on after the early game and actually claim objectives. I really thought they were going to fourth pick that Slatter, because that was like the obvious man, Slatter, Lifestealer. It would have actually enabled them to initiate go in the storm, kill him with the life steal. I think mm -hmm. without something like Slider, you, it's going to be it's going to be pretty tough to to deal with him. Night Stalker. Huh. Okay. So some silence for the Phoenix, like Ben mentioned uh, earlier, and also st silence for Storm. They have a pretty good lockdown versus Storm as well with the Dragon Knight. This also makes Magnus life Magnus life really difficult too because. As we've seen, when you have these heroes that can control with a fight, Magnus and his RP has just become much less threatening. Before they had, like, Spectre Haunt uh, that we saw Monkey King always trying to scout out this time. Night Stalker, like, he just, I, I guess Storm can provide vision, but it's still very risky uh, in s playing Storm here because he could get the DK and the X. The Medusa, like you were mentioning the last game. I think that, that hero, I think, with Phoenix is just godly and with Magnus. It's pretty. It's all right with Empower too. Like Medusa yeah, often struggles to get, like get some right click damage out. The Empower definitely somewhat mitigates that problem. Mm. I know. I'm trying to think about predictions because Paul's right about to ask us. <laughs> I am about to ask you. <laughs> How know. the devil did you know, Ben? Hmm. Uh, it is time for predictions. So, yeah. where are we going for I'm game three? Feeling like I think this is the first time I look at these drafts and think, yeah, OG's actually perhaps got a draft advantage. I think. Like game one, game two, they struggle in terms of draft. This time around, much stronger lanes, much better answers to what VP's throwing at them. Okay, Ben? I'm also going to go with OG. I think Medusa would have worked really well for them in game number two. And they're like, oh, man, why didn't we pick that last game? Now they have it. I think it's great with the Phoenix, good protecting them. OG. Okay. I'm actually going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to go with VP. I think that their lanes are pretty strong, and I think that they can actually come out of the lanes and actually pressure buildings. I feel like OG looks a little bit greedy, but if they do get to the super late game, they do have it. But I'm still going to go VP. Okay, very good indeed. Two for OG, one for VP as we head into game number three next. It is tied up. Who comes out with the advantage? And, of course, championship point. Let's head to the arena and find out with OG versus Virtus Pro, game three. Yeah. 
The series is tied up at one apiece. OG now turning to mass team fight to get back up on top while we've gone for a red and blue theme coming out from Virtus Pro. Cinderin, it seems this crowd is trying to get behind them all. I was thinking about your comment in the last game where you were like, this team isn't biased toward Rift Pro. I'm like, hey, hey. Really, dude? Really? Okay, okay. They started the OG <laughs> chat, and then instantly there was a boo, and the VP guys are right behind him again. Oh, that's funny. There's, there's okay, a lot there, of love for both sides. Let's talk about the game a bit, because there's yeah, actually a lot, there's a lot of chop chop to get done here. This is a very, very different draft than some stuff I quickly want to cover. OG's early game laning stage is not very strong. Their support duo Phoenix Elder Titan, I feel like it's pretty greedy. It's not that easy to set up kills. It's not that easy to apply pressure. Uh, they are very low on lockdown. There's no very obvious synergy with Magnus and Power either. Yes, it's pretty good on Medusa, but you don't get the cleave on anyone. Uh, so their lineup has a couple of issues. Uh, EP are good at early aggression, but when it comes to the big team fights, OG's lineup is really dangerous to fight into. They have so much AoE control, so much AoE damage. However, what we talked about before in the in the end of the last game was that, you know, OG seemed to have this problem with losing the early mid game. When I look at this, I don't think it's gonna be different. I I think they could fall behind even harder in this game than the previous ones, and I hope they prove me wrong, because else this game could actually be a really big stomp. But if they manage to get through the mid game and get toward the late game, their lineup is great. But it's it's a high risk, high reward kind of draft in my eyes. You can see VP actually working out as well. Like they understand that OG, okay, the early games can be bad, but no one's really gonna be contesting anything you do. So the Night Stalker, which is gonna be running a four position for Lil, goes for the Iron Talon and three uh, Tangos. They're going to try and get a lot of farm inside the jungle if it's going to be possible. So it's up to Jirax to run interference. His stomp actually on no one, with the help of Lil, they still managed to block up the mid lane. So they still get the advantage that way, but Anna, yeah, it's going to be pretty even no matter how this works. Yep. But this, is, this for me, is the, is the other critical lane. So you talk about like the influence of, of Virtus Pro with their, with their roaming. You're not going to have a lot from Warlock and Night Stalker to start with. We have to wait for either the first or the second nighttime phase and see how many items Lil has got to see how effective that will be. So in the meantime, it's about the one-on-one -on -one matchups. So far, no one has always been on top of Anna in this series. Yeah, this is a less... Uh, I feel like this is a lane where even if no one plays exceptionally well, it's less winnable or you win it by less if you win. But it, it, it's still it's still a lane that Dragon Knight can take an advantage in. Just using Great Fire well, controlling the creep wave well. Storm will push you, you can push him back. Uh, no real kill potential, especially not with the supports of OG like we talked about. The only thing you need to be wary of is don't take too many static remnants and Dragon Knight's just fine here. So. Yep. But Ana will have a better time. The options for massive outplay for no one are pretty limited. Yeah, they're gonna require more on the, on the rotations. Uh, Jirax, Elder Titan is fantastic for invading the jungle and causing issues for the Night Stalker, but because of the Observe Ward that was already placed down by Virtus Pro overlooking the bottom rune, they knew that Jirax came over, so Lil rotates up and he goes to the opposite side of the map where they also have protective vision. They also saw the fact that OG planted their own Observer Ward there, so for the first nighttime movement, you can bet Nelly that you're not gonna have Lil go for that point of aggression. This is, this is like the dream lane for X. If you were to ask me what one of the worst dual lane safe lanes I could come up with would be, this one's pretty high up. <laughs> Phoenix Medusa is a really bad lane. Pasha is actually just bullying Fly in a one on two lane because what is he supposed to do? Medusa has no impact in this lane really in terms of pressuring, he can only farm. Mm -hmm. So Pasha's having a great time. On the contrary, S4 in the bottom lane is up against something way harder. The Warlock, way stronger zoning support. And, and there's the Ramsey's live steal. It's not yep. just a live steal, there's Ramsey's live steal. This guy. Oh, great shockwave he, he from S4. That's very important. He just pulled all three range creeps with that shockwave instead of giving Solo the pull. Let's see if we can get any of the last hits on these three. This is lane deciding stuff, actually. He got himself about three quarters of a level with this one shockwave play. S4 is exceptionally good at this as an offlane player, in my opinion. One of the best at manipulating creep aggro. Oh, open wounds, S4 is going to skewer away. Probably have to trigger that shrine. A little bit earlier for him, but he'll be okay with it. Lil does have a small action rune. He found himself a invis rune. But he's just going to come up and grab the bounty and just continue the farm. I'm <laughs> just looking at Posh playing X. It's kind of funny. Hey, he's dressed. He's dressed for the occasion. That yeah, is one definitely. stylish set 
Oh, so what, axe. Okay, so what OG need to work with here is they need to try to push the wave out with Medusa and get pulls for the Phoenix. They got the one small pull before that Pasha contested. If they can somehow push the wave out entirely and get the big pull, that would make a very big difference for the No-Tail Phoenix. Jerax, unfortunately, hasn't really been able to accomplish too much. He pinged out earlier that Lil probably rotated to the other side of the jungle and he was completely right in his pings, but couldn't really get up there and contest him. And now Lil is back in the other side. So essentially, Jerax is level one and yep. Lil is level three. That's been the trade-off in the jungle. Big win for VP. Yep, and Jerax really wanted to start fighting. It's the reason why he's got boots and smoke on him. He meant to keep up with the Night Stalkers maneuvering, but Lil, this is great news for Virtus Pro because coming into that first night time with uncontested farm plus experience gain, you're going to be looking at Nightstalker having a, a proper impact in night time, which is in five seconds' time. Yeah. Want to point out, by the way, the TPing top. You got a level two over on Jirak, so the spirit's going to come out straight to the stomp. Pasha will be held a position. The creep wave goes around him, but <laughs> what does no deal do here? Fly is not ready to fight. Exactly. Fly wasn't ready, so. It's still, I think OG have to try to do stuff like this, could connect their support so they can at least assess some sort of pressure on the map. But it, it's not too easy. Now, here's the problem. VP have successfully gained a 2,000 gold lead in four minutes with zero kills and zero towers. If there was a tower, that would be pretty bad as well in four minutes. That's pretty scary. Mm -hmm. they, they, they're just getting way more out of the map than OG. They're that zero kill may change. You got yep. only one point up in upheaval from Solo, so you went for exactly the same build, but there's no level six on the Storm Spirit. So you can rely on Lil. This Storm needs to be able to connect. Jirax, he actually can't do it. He was short of the mana, which means he cannot hold BP in place. Which allows Virtus Pro to get first blood, and Lil's not done. He He'll will chase kill him. down Jirax, as he's got the nighttime advantage here. A 2 0 1 over on Lil and Jirax. Well, Stomp comes off cooldown, but Lil can just basically like, tiptoe around this. Jirax goes for the Stomp in the tree lines. He voids him. He's got more than enough damage, and Jirax is toast. Now, top lane. Okay, Fly, what do you want to do? You just lost so many of your teammates. Icarus Sive back under the tier 1 tower. You have no friends to work with, and even S4 is forced to TP off this off lane. You said the laning phase is going to be rough for OG, but this is more than abrasive. Lil, no mana for Void. They are putting so much pressure on the map. This is an absolute five-minute beatdown by VP right now. And the problem for me looking at OG here is that I, I don't see the, the solution right now. It's just they have to sit back, try to find the farm, and eventually come back with a team fight. But usually if, it, if it's this extreme in the early game, it's a problem. Sometimes you can tank a little loss, you know. We've seen other teams being able to come back. It's not like the game is it's just over at minute five, but mm -hmm. this is this is worrying for OG. This could, the way this is developing, if this keeps going, this could be the most one-sided game of the Grand Finals so far. But we need to see what OG managed to do when they find their levels. Unfortunately, the supports are just not, they're not finding that much. Jerax yep. is still at level three. What's the Nightstalker? Almost level five. Yep. Phoenix three and a half. What's Warlock? Four and a half. Lil is phase Huge boots. XP win as well. Like phase boots, Blightstone plus the Iron Talon. He actually does work when he goes in. Hex Speaking of going in, it's Pasha. You've got Anna. He's got a haste rune. So Pasha can't just outrun this. Got to keep the distance. Care of the spins as Anna is low, but the stomp. Perfect position. Flying as well with the sprites out. He's the man to get the kill onto Pasha. Good for OG to find something now. They, they need Anna to get involved in these kills because of the shortcomings of their carry and of their support duo. The lane switch up actually worked out. properly too. Like the fact that Anna is moving around in the jungle and letting the supports tank up on the top lane, get the experience, and it lets No Town take the mid, the Medusa, the hero, which there's no way Dragon Knight should be able to kill the Medusa, yeah, not alone at least. They, they need to have a hero sit mid constantly so Dragon Knight doesn't push the tower with Elder Dragon form, and it will be No Tail on that duty right now, as you said. Fly. Getting some good experience in the top lane. It's gonna oh, bottom lane skewer from S4. He brought in the life stealer. He has to TP out now again. There's no friends to help him here. And the vision game from Virtus Pro. There's the observer ward behind the tower, so they know that S4 is alone. And the other observer ward is watching inside the jungle, exactly where Lil now initiates onto Anna. Anna doesn't have a lot of mana. He's got two bottle charges up his sleeve. Needs to get back under the safety of the tier two tower. Not to mention the spirit stomp, but that both Lil. jumps got burnt. Another quick jump, but Void is available. Anna's in so much trouble. Virtus Pro, all three kills currently belong to the Night Stalker. Such a good play from Lil here, just playing patiently, taking advantage of the Observer Ward he has. 
acknowledging that this stomp is coming in from the Titan, keeping track of the mana. He decided not to use Crippling Fear because if he had done that, he wouldn't have had a second Void. So just holding the mana there, the beautiful play from him. And it's daytime. Yep. Lil's fun a ends little bit for of the a breather. Marvin. A little breather for OG that they desperately need. But he's already going to have the, the medallion. Oh. This is already up on him with all the kills. Uh, Skewer away. No one has tricked it. Dragonfall. Oh, wait, how did that just happen? I hope we got that. It was okay. RP. It was RP and then Dragonform is off. But he dragon tailed him. He must have dragon tailed him at the same time as RP. Else he, S4 could have skewered him. He didn't get the skewer off. He got RP off, but no skewer, so... Well, no one's looking for a kill now. He's got six one charges up his sleeves. There's a lot of... He doesn't have enough mana for one of those stuns, but when he gets hit by the Spirits of Fly, no one just cannot attack. He got hit by the tower as well, so Shadow Word has to start bringing his life back up again. No Tails rotating over. He does have the Stone Gaze up. But there's no way for OG to hold them there when the RP is down and Elder Titan's on the opposite lane. It's still good for No-Tail to show up here. He stops the push. There needs to be presence. They have to show heroes and show numbers. So VP don't just take control of everything. Uh, no S4, damn it. S4 has managed to... <laughs> I can't explain... <laughs> Toby, I, actually, I really can't explain it. This is actually unbelievable. Anyway, so S4 has been able to get quite a bit out of his laning stage. I think he's played a very good off lane this game. Uh, he's currently level 6, going to be hitting 7 here from this double... What are they called again? Tomato and potato? They're not called Ursus anymore. The Hell Bears. Hell Bear, there we go. Maybe I'm just getting old. I'm just starting to forget things. I don't uh, remember my Nama. <laughs> but S4 is, is getting quite a bit here. So that is a bright side for OG. Their off lane went pretty bit, pretty well. If he does get a Blink Dagger, it opens up opportunities, but they still need the well, other course to scale to have the damage. Triggers the Darkness coming into the tower. Because he used the Void already, Jirax very wisely TPs out and, and makes it so Fly doesn't have to fight. Fly, she didn't even have sprites up, so we couldn't really help. This darkness won't really be able to gain much. He does steal the bounty. Well, actually, I say that. He now rotates around behind Fly the tier one. Fly doesn't see him with the ward because of darkness, so... And the axe is kicking up. They've got Look at their warding, by the way. OG. Yeah. They've, played t they've placed two safe lane covering wards. That's how much Lil is, is terrifying them right now. He can cut through that tree. If yep. he wants to just run straight into they fly, he there. can do it. Ana pinged him out. No, nope. he's this right on top difficult. of the dire observe ward. <laughs> Darkness or not. Now he's going to run over and find out Ana is farming. Yeah, that's that observe ward he put down Stole the so long ago. Jirax is trying to interrupt any kind of extra farming as well. And meanwhile, they just have this... Ramsey's life sealer farm like crazy. Midas, soon to be uh, an armlet. Warlock is level six. Dragonite is coming bottom. This tower will be pushed now by VP. Let's see if OG have any response. Jerex is currently level four, minute 11. And I think the tome, actually the tome is gonna be used by Fly. So he's level seven. Here's the TP coming in. He is strong right now. This is a strong Phoenix with level four in Fire Spirit. That's if they can force them into the fight. So there goes your first stop over on the Dragon Knight. Quick sprite out. Fly. If he. Okay, he can't even think. He doesn't have enough mana. Like, he's still short to reach his Nova. Raindrop is giving him two mana a second here. So 10 help. seconds for his combo. But now he won't have Fire Spirits, so using the Supernova is very difficult. And uh, there Life Stealer is a good counter in the first place. He has Arcanes plus the Ring or now, so he's, he's back up. But this push, once again, Dragon Form gets popped by Virtus Pro. The damage to the tower is there, but considering VP start this game, the fact that OG are holding the line, or at least slowing down the line, they stopped the bleeding. It's a good thing for them. They stopped the bleeding. It, it looked like this could be a very scary graph, but OG have made some good movements to prevent losing was, towers. You know, Anna, with all the movements, like she came out from no tail as well as him. He's at the top level on the board right now. He's the first one to hit double digits. Got a lot of experience out of farming jungle. Yeah. And also the farm to go with it. Looking towards that Bloodstone. Has himself an Arcane Rune. Nice thing for the fight. There's a smoke maneuvering for Virtus Pro. Nighttime advantage. They are fighting into the one area they don't have vision. And the Dire Observer Ward won't scout out anything either. So they wrap around. S4's the biggest target. He actually breaks the smoke. 
And he's back behind the tower into the trees. S4 has to know something's a little right, and now he definitely does. Lil reveals himself. S4 still under the cover of Fog, and then Blink. Skewer pulling Pasha back under the tower. Pasha does get the call off, but with the spirit forward, looking for the stop. It connects on Pasha and Anna right in the middle of him. The spirit damage. The golem will fall, trying to turn the tide of this battle, but with Warlock already down and Pasha trapped in the trees underneath the Nova. That stun is actually going to cancel. They pull him back in with a vortex. Anna will find a double kill. And Virtus Pro really pushing the issue at a tier 2 tower. They just overdove a bit there. OG took full advantage of the positioning of Axe to get a good skewer in. Rams is going to force fly away. So, what happened there was if Axe gets the call off before the skewer, they can follow up with a Night Stalker Silence and maybe win that fight. But they, they gave the OG a lot of time to think about their response. That was like a three or four second dive into fog. OG with a better defensive position were able to hold and get some very important kills for Ana. Dragon Knight's going to try and force down another tower with his form triggered on top lane. No tell. Standing his ground and fighting. Obviously a lot of OG's uh, reinforcements from the bottom lane with no ability to TP top for the moment. So it's up to no tell to hold that tier 1 tower. Bottom and finally, Ramsey does bring down the tier 1 on bottom. OG did a very good job delaying this this long. That was not an easy defense by them. They had to commit a lot of resources. I think they would have liked to have higher CS values than they do, but defending the tower is just more important. Sometimes you got to sacrifice it, a bit of the farm, to keep the map control. Map control is generally the most valuable resource in all of Dota. That's why wards are so extremely good. For the price. These fights are going to become very, very interesting with both of the armlets rapidly approaching for Virtus Pro. In fact, one of them now being done over on the live stealer. It's going to be up to, would you even say it's up to Anna to ensure he gets that last hit in, ensures the kill, and then moves on to the next target okay. and not get kited out by Toggle. There's a couple of things. They have uh, Fire Spirits. Sunray, especially, is really, really good against armlet. Um, and Supernova, of course. Like, Phoenix has so much damage over time that as long as he is on the target, they should not be able to toggle whatsoever. But if Fly is down, it can get tricky. Now look at this tight vision again. Jirax, they got two wards up. And Jirax is right between both of them. The blink, the call, just in front of the Roshan pit. Don't think anyone's really going to get there in time to help him out. Silenced up, which means he can't stop. And a quick Culling Blade down. And Pasha claims a kill. We're going to move in toward mid. OG again with defensive positioning. They will have Storm Split pushing bottom. He actually doesn't have a TP. Infest. Yeah, oh, they want to go it. for him bottom. Nice move back here from Ana. Good read. The Radiant Scan actually didn't hit. He moved to the west and actually avoided, avoided hitting the target. So Pasha may actually work out that he is just farming the side camp. It was a good read from Ana. Now he needs to not give it away after. He's actually going to show on the wave now. Ball Lightning's in quickly. Take it out and then get the hell out of here. And oh, oh wow. he went down south. Pasha bunt, jumps in north, doesn't get the call. And without that control, they do not find the kill. And S4 wants it now. Reveal the position, his Blink Dagger is up, so Blink RP is available. Lil, having fun with Fly on the bottom rune area, and Phoenix just straight TP out. Fly, understanding the situation, he was dead if he didn't do that exactly as he did it. Scan from Dire, they will see that BP is still there now. The night is over, Darkness is online for Lil still, so... They could look to extend this night whenever they want, but at the end of the day, Again, OG are holding. This is honest split push pressure made BP, tempted BP to try to go for the kill. They failed. Ana got out because of really, really good reads and is keeping his farm going. Uh, it's that mid game you were talking about previously. Like, OG seems to be able to find, uh, find enough space on the map and not give enough over to Virtus Pro that Darkness. that mid game becomes scary for uh, uh, like VP bearing down on OG. This ward of flies is good, but they're on the smoke. Pasha could find an opening here. Yeah, he runs in through the rear. There's your jump up. Double call. He got the big ones. He got fly as well as S4. Jirak split. He doesn't create enough work. Or actually, it does. Combining up with the stone gaze. Pasha will die, but Medusa now left alone. Not enough mana for shield. And a big hit. Solo creating the space with a chaotic offering. No mana on Ana to come in and join the fight right now. He needs time. He'll try to split push top tier one, but VP will be claiming the tower first. They can now choose between trying to defend top or going for more. Ramsey's or maybe both. Deeping. Ramsey's going top, should be able to hold this. Unless Ana wants to be cheeky. Can't get a couple hits in. Yeah, oh. going, going on live stealer would be pretty challenging. I could have just tried to hit the tower sometimes and see if he could get the last hit, but rather leave it out of deny range and go for it later on. 
Oh, Solo's actually trying to take the double stack of Ancients. He's dealing some good damage here. He will get a couple of okay, With Fatal Bonds, he's actually taken two of them. He got three creeps there. T-Rex is trying to hunt him down. Not gonna happen. No. That was a high risk play from VP once again. This time it works. It was similar to the play they made bottom, but this time they nailed the axe call. And the moment that two hero call lands, the fight is almost won already. But that could have gone wrong. It could have. not found it. Still need to be careful with these plays, and OG are definitely ready for them. Now here goes another tower. So VP claim all the tier ones 18 minutes in. Yeah, Rams was just able to slip up. Anna wants kills though. Yeah, the towers are going to fall. I think he understands this. But with that Bloodstone fresh on the Storm Spirit, they want to hunt. They want to find murder. And the easiest target for them right now is going to be Pasha and Solo. They're both standing on top of each other. S4 needs to get a little bit close. There's no vision up that hill for Virtus Pro. So oh, no, no one, he's walking straight into it. Anna leaves the remnant behind. A little bit of chip damage into that dragon form. They're waiting for it. S4 still holding that RP. Gets hit by the breeze fire. Starts his skewer just to get a range of, of the... Of the control from the Warlock, Jirax caught in the tree line, and back they go. They really don't want to go on this Dragon Knight. He's so tanky and they just are very limited on damage. I think the key ability to killing him is actually Sunray. But it's not going to do it alone, especially not with only level 2. Whoa, Anna! Oh, the call is there, fly! He lets the Sunray go, he's trying to keep the Storm Spirit alive. It's actually doing a pretty damn good job. Ooh. S4, he thought about it. It could have been great synergy. No Tal was in the perfect position with the Stone Gaze, but now they trigger Darkness. That was flat out a bait for Mana. He wanted to get jumped there to set up the RP, but VP realized in time that that kill wasn't happening and that they were risking their positioning, so didn't go for it. Good play from both teams once again, but VP are coming out ahead. Sitting now on a 6,000 lead on the gold, and the experience is climbing up as well. But this is not an insurmountable lead for OG by any means. Their lineup isn't meant to be strong right now. They have got through the early game dangerous stage better than they could have hoped for, I think, after the 2k lead minute four. Yeah. They've managed to do a good job here. And now the question is, what's the next play for VP? If they're waiting for any key items. Pasha will go for four staff, be able to bring the heroes back in. Lil will get the axe. That is a big item against this type of lineup from OG. It's all about getting the jump, having vision advantage. No tail, gets mana sealed off in time. Yeah, he needs to stay alive. Support is coming in. Jirax, the spirit stomp. Ramsey still protected. Lil actually dodges it. The Sunray is keeping Medusa up, and there's your call from Pasha. Anna jumps in deep. The RP from S4. It gets what? Only the golem was affected. And now with the Nova, there will be a double stun on Nova and Pasha, but they're ready to fight once more. Dickerous dive away as S4. He will be culling later down. Pasha with the double kill. The initiations have been perfect for Virtus Pro when they've looked for them. And they're going for more. Fly wants a Sunray up. The call is there, but he only goes one direction. The bird is dumb when he's flying like that. That was actually... The thing is, zero hero RPs like this look so bad, but it was so close to being a three hero one. You have to go for this attempt as OG, and the moment it misses, the fight is over. But if you don't even try, you're just sacrificing heroes. That was a potential good teamfight setup, and VP did a very good job splitting up to not letting OG find that. But that got very close. They still have to be cautious with this amazing teamfight of OG, and they're doing a great job playing around it. And this is why the agonyms on Nightstalk will be so important. As long as they know where notes uh, S4 is. <laughs> <laughs> Toby? As long as I know where the Magnus is. I'm going to call him by his hero's name, I think. That's probably better. Whatever works for you, Sin. Yeah. I'll go with as you. As long as they know where S4 is, it becomes very difficult for OG to find the fight. With no this. RP available, where yeah. is that ET spirit? This is Three seconds till it's up. And in fact, Jirax is TPing down. He just went to the bottom line. They are doing nothing to even slow down VP on this Roshan. Upheaval becomes a buffer, but Virtus Pro don't even require it. I think Jirax understands he needs levels. This is a level seven Elder Titan. He is the lowest level on the map and he has no influence. That aura is meant to make Virtus Pro scared to go into OG. That aura is meant to lacquer on top of everything OG has for their team fight. And he said to put everything into that. The spirit doesn't have a lot of bite. It's just, it's a rough game for the Elder Titan. Oh, that blink, skewer away. S4. Lucky to dodge Lil. Again, if that Aghanim Scepter is up, that doesn't happen. Mid lane, they're thinking about it. Our people slowing down No-Tell heavily. The Sunray is out, so Medusa still
still silenced up. Can't let the Stone Gaze go. Fly is keeping Medusa there. Here comes your spirit into the stomp. Nice the dear. coming blade was too early. Life Stealer as well as the DK. They might get stopped for a second, but the damage is still being done. Medusa falls and Ramsey's once more. Jurax, it is the biggest meat pile for him just to steal from. Another double kill for Pasha. He's been the man of the hour. Now 6-3 for him, a blink dagger on the DK. Initiation's getting better and better with every minute that passes for Virtus Pro. And no one can play so confidently. There's nothing stopping him right now. He will only really die to a Sunray plus full magic damage burst. His plus armor is good against the Elder Titan aura, so they can't bring him low enough on armor to be able to kill him with, like, the Medusa. And they just got the mech for solo. Like, yeah. now they've got the burst regeneration and aura. Yep. This is the perfect game for Virtus Pro. Executed wonderfully. So patient in the fight, and here goes Pasha again. Blink call, there's not a lot of mana on top of Anna. Now, at the same time, you can say the same thing about Pasha, but support's rotating up. Lil plus no one are on their run. They actually scan and it pings. It actually pings Anna in the tree line. They know exactly where he is, but now they've got to go further north. And he walks into it. No one. Short range blink. This Storm Spirit, 12 plus zone charges, can't even deny himself. Now down to eight. I don't have much to say about VP's play in this game, apart from pretty much... Damn! One good decision after the other. They're playing exceptionally well. It seems very tempered. Like you, they, they're in a great position for the fight. They take two kills, but they don't go too far. The only yeah. overextension you could probably even feel was what happened on the bottom lane, but that was a situation forced out by S4. That's true. The one dive they did bottom was a misplay. The rest of the game has been extremely rock. good. Dota gonna drop the rock on No-Tail Onto Medusa. Here. Fly signs up again with a Sunray. Where's the support? Randy moves forward. no -tail's trying to get rid of the column, but Upheaval is making this difficult. Anna in the neighborhood. Bring him back to the remnants. There goes your Stone Gaze. So you do get rid of the golem. Where's the support? S4's waiting. He's still under the cover of Invis. He has his Blink available. He wants them to group up so he can go for the RP, but VP's positioning is so scattered. He'll have to skewer into the two-man RP, but there's just no follow-up. The ET Splitter won't do jack when Medusa is Gone. The ET split to try to create more space. And he'll have to deny himself up. OG are down two cores with no buyback. MVP, like blood crazed sharks, they hunt OG in this ocean that really belongs to them. They're gonna go high ground. They do have the Aegis on Ramsey still. No RP, no Earth Splitter, no mana for Super. No, okay, yes, sticks. So Fly can go in here. But VP's heroes just seem unkillable. They're gonna do this spread where Storm can't hit them all with ball lightning. They still have the mech ready on Warlock. That wasn't even used. So gonna claim the tier three, play it pretty safe here, and go for the top shrine surrounding or bordering the Roche pit. No, they were pinging it, but didn't want to go. This is this is the no risk Dota from from Virtus Pro. Wait and see where OG is gonna come out to. Don't lose this lead. You're now hitting 13, almost 14,000 advantage in net worth, 12k on the experience graph. Everything goes the way of VP. The minuses are making the richer richer. Do they become the richest then? They become Monopoly. <laughs> because internet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. What. What upsides do we have for OG? It's hard to find them. They lost a lot of Bloodstone charges on Ana, but... They, they still have good team fight on the, on the higher ground in defense. Lincoln's on Medusa is completed, and he will be building in toward a damage item, I would imagine. If No-Tail goes Mantis style, they still don't have any damage output, really, to speak of. Uh, but... Oh, a jump. Oh. oh, short jump. They go over towards Pasha. Pasha takes a lot of damage when he gets hit by the Mystic Snake, and now into the Sunray. Fly That's started killing himself off, but... With that kill, 643 gold into the into the Phoenix. They should be able to bring down the T1 town. There's no buyback for the Axe. They might pressure forward even further here. You this have RP available. Pick. So yeah, take the, take the T1 and the T2 tower. Aegis is down. All right, we were talking about upside throw. Gee, that kill was a pretty big upside. Just Space kill created. And, kill and two towers in one play, more than likely here. VP might try to fight. They have Golem in five. They have the BKB also on the Dragon Knight, so Good he is going to be huge in this Anna. fight. Oh, Ana jumps in, tries to clean up the oh, wave. No one jumps up. There's your Sunray again. Need to keep him alive for the RP! Magnus hits on them all! The Sunray's been pushed down a little bit further. They've only killed off the Warlock for the ET Splitter. It'll kick in. Anna is low. Ramsey's the Rage will wear off in a second, so he has to start backing up. 
the tower is still OG's objective. They haven't brought it down. The denial not gonna be possible. OG does get the last hit, but don't tell. You can't leave him alone. Storm already did. Anna has left. He's gone top to start the push going. While Ramsey's and Lil, they start the fight. Pushing in towards the Medusa. Jirax tries to create space. They get the stun off with a calling blade. No towel will fall. OG trying to push the envelope. But they get punished as the pickoffs on the retreat only include no tell for the moment. That was a really, really good fight for OG still, though. They set that up so beautifully with the great RP from S4 into a good stone gaze. Supernova wasn't used, though. I think Fly didn't have mana during the fight to get that off, and that could have made a difference. But again, it's just showing like how well it needs to go for OG right now. It's just the, the glaring issue is they don't have damage. There's three hero RP, three hero Earth Splitter, or at least two. Medusa is hitting, like, what is it you like to say? A wet noodle? Like, <laughs> uh, whatever it is. It sounds like something an Australian guy would say. Wow! So, am I wrong? He's hitting like Crikey. a fish. He's hitting like a fish. It ain't a beauty. Like a wet fish. <laughs> like a wet a fish. A slippery wet fish. Uh, well, if you swing the damage it, if doesn't you even stick. If you swing it hard enough and it's the right fish, it can be pretty painful. Okay, we're not, he, right now, uh, he is just a bad fish. He's not, he's not like a marlin. Well, OG just had pretty much the close to a perfect fight and it wasn't good enough. Mm. What is the next move? They, uh, this the next time, move is to hide. Lil now has Aghanim Scepter. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Ramsey's good read here. It's going to hide in the tree line. Jirax is probably going to try and push the spirit down there to try and find him, which means Anna needs to jump straight away and get the Orchid off. If he doesn't, Ramsey just does that. Rage away. But you do have the, the creep wave with the catapult behind him. So OG, once again, they aggressively posture, looking for the kill. If they can get it, they guarantee the tower. Now, they guarantee a little bit of damage on the tower. Ooh, this ward for OG is really, really good. They have a lot of information to play with here. And if they can actually make any use of it, the Yule Scepter is up. They try and keep the Axe under control so he can't blink forward, but the Dragon Knight, he's able to do so with a double breathe fire. Magnus will fall before he gets the RP off. Dragon Knight locked in stone for almost an eternity. Eternity is over, and he'll turn himself over to Medusa. The Storm, ah, it's not a, he can't help out here. It's just run away, and it's gone on top already. The control is perfect, no one's damage output. The splash with both breathe fire and double damage dragon form. He was hitting like we already had the Terror Blade doing terrible, terrible damage. This time around, it's the Dragon Knight. They found Mag with Axe. Oh, the oh, jump! Oh. He got another one. He got the other Titan. Nice Easy as pie. Axe boys, pretty good. Just find that vision. Just give the vision for Dragon Knight to go on whoever he wants. That, Mag's that up fight was Night Stalker did so much work in that fight without. Barely by casting anything, just being in the right place gave Dragon Knight the easiest fight of his life. Finding the Mag, the moment Mag dies, the fight's over. Like, OG, no. it doesn't matter if they play perfectly after Mag dies, it's just flat out impossible to win that fight. So they have to protect Mag. I think S4 needs to go for a Shadow Blade or they need to play under smoke. The smoke expired and they didn't find the opening they were looking for. Sure, they got the tower, but. It's not worth the heroes they lost, and the racks especially. <laughs> mm -hmm. Definitely a bad trade-off. Now VP, they've actually got really good vision in the OG base. There's no sentries. The ping here. actually came out from Fly, so I think he's aware that that Observer Ward does exist. And the smoke being used by OG, wait, was that actually in range? Oh boy. It's all in time. But they're looking at Roshan. Roshan is up, it was a quick timing for him. It takes so forever. OG kind of want to contest Roshan, they don't want to take it. We'll be moving around. There goes the Live Sealer Illusion. It looks inside the pit. And the Dire Scan, they don't find anybody. <laughs> but here comes Virtus Pro under the cover of their own smoke. Ramsey's the one exposed. Now he jumps into Axe. There's this. no Dire Vision on top of Virtus Pro. They have it closer towards the Shrine. But VP are inside Roshan. Dragon Form triggered. They are going to start Roshan. So Fly. where is this it's Vision? Oh, there's the stun, the blink out. No one was ready to engage. Fly does have buyback available, but without the Shrine to TP2, getting into this fight is going to be very, very difficult. Not to mention, Lil is still a walking map pack. He has darkness. That's Roche. You oh. thought the night was going to end. OG can't get in. Spirit Stomp. 
They can try to steal it with Storm. He's oh, got a drive! Long jump! Snatches the Agency Mortalist! Ramses it does it! And it killed Roshan! Now they turn their attention over towards Pasha. The stun, it won't connect from the Elder Titan. Dragonite has to wait this out with upheaval. They just can't really move anywhere. And it's already leaving. He understands. Cut your losses. This fight is VPs! That was actually pretty pretty good from OG to at least get the Roche last hit. I thought they were going to get nothing there. Ana going for the, the risky risky play of trying to steal the Aegis. Didn't die in the process at least. But there's there's just so little to look forward to for OG in this game. Mm -hmm. Medusa has died seven times. No Tail is having a very hard game. I don't blame him. I think it's a super difficult game to play in. He is that opinion, jump. The yep. Anna Ball Lightning kill on Roshan. He wanted the Aegis. He didn't want to have that. <laughs> well, he'll take what he can get. Yeah, something. It's with the Aegis Immortal potential that he could have kept fighting there. Now he's got the Bloodthorn up and running. Like, Anna's doing what he needs to do. He understands that he needs to survive, not lose these Bloodstone charges, and wherever he possibly can, get a pick off and buy time and space for OG. You've lost your mid racks, you still hold your tier 2 towers. And you're still going to believe in the power of the Magnus jump. This is that late game which VP have been positioning perfectly against. But one mistake, one bad play, and OG might finally have enough damage to kill someone from VP. I still think they require more farm on the Medusa, or the Storm needs a secondary damage item in addition to this or uh, this Bloodthorn. He just he doesn't really want to buy one though. It's if you go all in on damage on Storm, this hero is extremely difficult to play without anything defensive. There's there's a couple of stuns there. The Dragon Knight stun is obviously very good. The Night Stalker sounds is a big problem. Axe Call is a very big problem, and that is the reason he's buying a Lincoln. So what you're saying is OG's gone. got issues. They have really big issues, and I would argue that this game is a lot more about draft than play, because I actually think OG have played a pretty damn good game. It's just extremely difficult to execute this lineup of theirs. And VP, not only is, not only is OG's lineup difficult to play, but VP's counters the, the big weakness that OG have early on. They have a great aggressive lineup to take advantage, and it's just a super good drafting from them. I feel like Solo has maybe not been outpicked a single time the whole tournament. The, their draft is always good, and the games they lose are mainly to themselves, <laughs> to be honest. Here they come. Dominant. Here we go. They wanted to Dragon Form. You know what he wants to do? Blink and Dragon Tail Stun. Whoever can find S4 goes for the skewer. Ramsey's was close by, but they just drag in DK. And well, S4 down again. Buyback is available while VP, they're deep inside the base. Where is your jump in? Magnus is actually holding onto his buyback. Now his Pasha gets the call off, but you'll set it up pretty quickly. The jump forward is over on the DK. Now this BKB is one off, but the chaotic offering is absolutely perfect. Combining it up with the Fatal Bonds, the damage will then again, now you've actually got Virtus Pro starting to retreat. Skewer back over. The RP is up for S4. Combining with a Shockwave and Sunray and the Storm from Jirax, Virtus Pro have to stick around. Ramses is the sole survivor for this team. He's looking for a kill on Medusa. Make this worthwhile. But the Yule Scepter, it buys time. It buys space. They understand killing off Ramses. It's difficult, to say the least. Great hold from OG, showing the strength of not buying back instantly. The lack of information for VP baited them to stay around. And the moment they saw this opportunity to jump on the Dragonite after the BKB wore off, the buyback comes in, they jump, and they get a fight. It's not a huge win for OG, but they get a couple of good kills. Still, they had to expend the buyback of Mag. Storm did die and lose Bloodstone charges again. And essentially, what was the outcome of the fight? Was it four for two plus buybacks? So pretty even. But because OG are behind, they get that extra influx of gold. So something for them. And actually a full Shiva for Fly now. He got really rich off of that fight. Wow. He got, I think, a thousand he, gold he from Killbomb. He killed alone. Pasha and he killed Lil yep. during that engagement. The only other money went to S4 for killing off Solo and no tail for no one's get death. And Fly is almost level 18. His damage is starting to become really significant. And sure, you've got Lifestealer on, on VP, but the Shiva's mm -hmm. level 3 Supernova is not easy to bring down. And you actually might have, have to try. Like both Shiva's and Scardi. Like, you actually have potential now from OG to kite. Yep. You can definitely kite these heroes. Let's, let's have a quick look at it again. So S4 goes through this entire engagement. He forces the fight to happen very deep and underneath the shrines of OG. Now, Virtus Pro understand they're in too deep. Uh, they want to back out. Pasha, that Yule Scepter timing. Yeah, very nice play from Jerex there to counter yep. out that. And then the slap down. But the funny thing is, like, while all this is going on, now S4's like, okay, I'm back. 
The fight can still be there. Let's jump it through the side, four staff into that. That Into the RP, nice. and then the Sunray Shockwave Stomp combo. The synergy, the timing is perfect from OG. They need so many more like that to get control of this game back. And I mean a lot more like that. They're like, very good at holding high ground as a team. I think mm -hmm. They're kind of reminding me of oh, what were they, the LGD team of the past that were just such a nightmare to push into on high ground because they really understood very well how to combine their abilities and what they can sacrifice and what they can't. LGD, yep. funnily enough, were also very good at doing that exact play with Phoenix, or sorry, with the Medusa. Oh, Phoenix the as well, actually. Someone needs to buy this guy a new gem. He just walked underneath the Dire Observer Ward, so Virtus Pro understand exactly what's That's coming big. their way. And notice again, Anna, refusing to be part of these fights yet. He's trying to get as much as he can by pushing up the side lanes before the engagements begin. He can just TP himself back into the fountain and then ball lightning to the front lines if he needs to. The gem is a really good point. I think VP have to get it. They should be buying it already. I don't know if anyone can afford it though. It doesn't look like it. They just got two sentry wards coming out to solo. Uh, by the way, notice that uh, Ramsey split his Sanjin Yasha into Manta plus Heaven's Halberd. He wants Ooh. the Halberd they to found break. Anna. Oh, yep, they did. Lil has the vision. Anna is just walking around, but he is very, very visible. It's not enough for Lil to kill him by himself. Even though Anna doesn't have the Lincoln Sphere yet, gee, where is the vision for him? He he sees almost nothing, goes into the tree line, still has no idea where Lil, where Lil is, and Lil is playing the edge of it. Anna in the trees. There goes your silence, and will it last long enough? Ramsey's yep. is there. He <laughs> has a bluff turn to deny himself. The 70 seconds on the sideline, and they brought their entire team up to stop him. Bloodstone Deny comes out down to three now for ah, Mana. Ah, ah. Damn. Ramsey's is really hard, that MKB coming into play. So I, he's going to split the SNY. I think the, the main reason he wants the Halberd is to break the Lincolns on Medusa so he can get open wounds off. It actually makes a big difference that they heal off their attacks on the Medusa with the open wounds running, and that he can also set up his Dragon Knight for the Dragon Tail. The Manta. What's it really good for? He can break fire spirits. He can maybe, if he's very clutch, dodge the Titan Stomp. What do you actually think about that Aghanim set to Titan Stomp? That is what's in the quick buy right now for Jirax. It gives the disarm to the ulti. I think it's pretty weak overall, to be honest. That's what he's putting his money into. But it can, it can make a difference. In my opinion, one of the worst Aghanim scepters in the game. But there's a place for everything. The disarm against a team with this much melee in it can allow you to hit a pretty good stomp. And could, make, could be the deciding factor. Most of the time we see Titans super late game look toward a refresher, but the problem is Jerax doesn't have enough mana in his build. He's just too low level. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, that's an issue. He has a lot of levels to gain before a refresher becomes a possibility. Even with Yules and Crest Mana region, there's not nearly enough on him, only 674. OG's moving out of their base. Every fight they've been looking to have an advantage in has kind of been like in their own territory, and I'm not even calling their side of the river their own territory anymore. That belongs to Virtus Pro for a while. Yeah, they have very aggressive wards in the OG jungle. Currently not all connected though. Phoenix no gets revealed. Bought a full AC, but he's not connected with his team. Gonna see if we're gonna have an infest play here. With Ramsey's yes. award, they find it. Smart. They don't. They OG. still don't have, do they still not have a gem? Uh the gem is on the ET. No, they haven't bought a gem. Long oh. jump! Trying to use the observer ward. Anna burns half of his mana to get in there. I'd say with uh, a couple of bust stone charges, he'd regenerate it, but he's got three. <laughs> Well, at least it's daytime for a little bit. That's it's pushed VP away. They're not going to take the engagement. He's still got another minute until Roshan. Like this would have been the sweet spot. You got two, like three minutes until it is nighttime, or ten seconds until darkness. I really wonder why they're not buying a gem. If they just aren't thinking about it, or if they don't think it's worth it. I feel like it's the best purchase right now for them out of anything, especially because you know not buying it. If you buy it when you're in a good position like this, it goes on the purchasing cooldown. So then you can, if you misplay later, you can have another gem later on. Mm -hmm. But like this... Yeah, right now, their only gem they bought is in the hands of Jurex. Yeah, maybe they're expecting to be able to claim it Here back. They go. But Infest onto the Dragon Knight. He can breathe fire and push this mid lane in just a little bit harder. Roshan's up in 15 seconds. The no Spirit tail. from OG, they're trying to stay as close as they can. 
There are Observer Wards on the Radiant side, the river, but it's Dragon who wants to fight the jump in through the rear. They get that kill, S4 is down with no buyback. Medusa, the Storm Gaze, she hasn't triggered it yet. Is it going to be enough time? Now it's going to come off, slow him down, wait for these BKBs to wear off into the Supernova. And Dragon Knight, he can't get away. Bloodthorn up, Randy's actually stoned, and now they will have more time. The rocks will fall, the Fatal Bonds will hold him there. No Toggle. one is toggling his way through this entire fight. They just can't get the kill. No tower will fall. And DK finally is down to the ball lightning and it will get back into safety relatively. But he's lost two heroes. Fly is still on the run. No ability to dive. He'll be culling with it down by Pasha. And Virtus Pro look for their second lane of racks. No buybacks for the three dead heroes of OG. The key again is just finding oh, man. Jump. He's gonna TP. He right. is delaying this. There goes your darkness. This lane of Rax is gone as well, for sure. Yeah, they have to let it go. Fortified just buys time. OG understand they can fight the bottom lane. When they have Phoenix as well as Magnus back up again, they will fight it. And VP, so far from what we've seen, they will pull out after taking this. They won't look for the engagement. No. Not without the Dragon Knight, at least. It's just, the problem that OG are facing is if, if Mac gets jumped, I, I don't... See, I don't see options. I yep. actually cannot imagine how they can possibly win a fight if Dragon Knights get, uh, or if the, if the Magnus gets jumped. S4's positioning is almost impossible to play as well because of the Nightstall cracks. It's kind of one of those checkmate situations where getting the jump is almost an auto win and having better vision is almost a given. And they, so, ha they had the better vision anyway. They had an Observer Ward behind OG. Yeah. I, and it wasn't even D Ward. You had the gem on the, on, the, uh, on the Elder Titan, but you didn't get close enough. You didn't actually see the high ground point. So oh, they had two Observer Wards around him. Yeah, T-Rex puts the Spirit in. There. Oh, Roshan belongs to Virtus Pro, and Lil dodges the Spirit. Easy. And now you get a heart on the Lifestealer. Oh, boy. Leaves the cheese on the deck. Looks like no one's going to be picking that one up. And Jump Taunt. Elder Titan, come play. He did. There you go. That's the gem back. Oh, nice we didn't see, buy a gem. See, that's why you don't buy it. Yeah, that's just, <laughs> Okay. It was the plan. Actually, they bought a gem. There's one from Lil sitting on the courier back at base. Yep. Uh, you got enough money. And Virtus Pro, they come hunting again. This time, there will be no observed wards outside the base for OG. And also, once again, Anna is trying to keep that pressure out through the top lane. You can look at the buybacks at the moment. Magnus is the only one with buyback. He's still short by 800 gold on Anna as Ramsey starts the assault. He doesn't care. No. Why would you? You got a secondary life plus a heart and a life steal of the skewer. It's on no one bringing him in range of the tier four towers. The creep waves end. They just don't have enough. The Magnus up in the air with the Yule Scepter. RP is still available, and you get again the stoning onto the Dragon Knight. But the rock is perfect. No one's falling down. Low triggers are cheese. The RP is there. Will it be enough damage? No tell. Try to split the damage out, but he's lost his storm spirit. He's lost that single target. The fly, the stun. It creates space. Comboing up with Jurax as no one is falling down. He can't toggle himself through that one. Now Ramsey's. He will try and go for the run. You still have brought down all the racks, and so the Megas are on the field. And come on back, Pasha. S4 will skew you in. Lil wants to keep fighting, and so does Ramses. This guy still has an Aegis. He wants an engagement. He wants OG to come to him. He wants to be one game up in the grand final. And all he needs to do is want it a little bit harder. Push the tier four towers and take it now. It's 40 seconds on the Storm Spirit. They're down Mega Creeps. Ramses is burning. More or less Burning. immortal. Someone put some sunblock on him. Firefly. I mean, fly, fly. Doing too much work. Spirits out. Doesn't really affect Ramsey. Doesn't have his rage. But there's your call. It got Magnus. There's no RP. The spins are doing the work. S4 has to force up himself up. But now they're actually locked together. The photo bonds are there at the same time. Well, Life Stealer, that's not working for him. He has to toggle his way through under no tell. Remember, <laughs> he's still got the Aegis. Finally, they'll burn him. Oh, he my lost God. his friend in the axe. So there's less manliness on the front lines. Ramsey's wants to run. Jurax will send him up and towards the air. No spirit. But here comes your TP in from S4. Where's your stun under rage? It doesn't exists and solo also successful tp away last game we had the absurd damage of the terror blade on high ground this time it's the tankiness of the life stealer he doesn't even have evasion apart well he does have the halberd actually how much is that again so 25 percent they they 
and they have a crest. He actually has a lot of evasion, Toby. Yeah, Why do you he say does. he doesn't have evasion? I Why said nothing of the sort. <laughs> okay, but seriously though, this life stealer currently has 30 armor, gets a crest on him, has the 25% evasion of Halberd already, and had the Aegis. It, he was harder to kill than Medusa for the for the VP lineup. And now the Megas are up. Oh gee. Oh, They're going to stay in the game hoping to have this incredible oh, team fight in their base, but... Nortel knows what he's got to do. It's rapier time, boys. Ah, there's no other play, really. I mean, what do you do? He's got to sell what he's meant to, to, to get to that. What did he, he, has the, he has the demon edge. He sold the wand, I believe. Okay. The what fact he's still them? holding on to that to this point of the late game. Arm up some camps. VP are having none of it. They want to go. Yep, they're coming in. The stun is already there. They found Anna S4. Yule Scepter will send up the Dragonite. Sets him up with a skewer back. No one's not part of this fight. Maybe with the Stone Gaze. They're keeping no one out of the engagement, allowing Anna and Notel to focus on the Immortal. I don't know why they want to do that. Ramsey's still alive down to one third life. The Rock will drop. Gets the extra stun. They're bouncing around. Double buybacks. Required. No RP like still available. They come back in. The three man RP. The damage. It needs to happen right now but no one's just standing his ground and doing the work this should be it this should be gg because you've got og one foot in the grave and now they're about to be pushed in by the russians but as pro they have wiped og from the face of the earth and are now one game up in the kiev major grand final so i was saying after game number two what og probably need to look into is having a better early game where they can build an advantage or at least be tied and not fall behind too much. I feel like they took a step in the wrong direction. I'm not sure what the guidance, what they were talking about backstage was. They actually took a fairly long break to talk over their strategy before we went into this game. And they come out with, I think, a solution to a problem that they didn't have instead of a solution to the problem that they do have. So. I, my conclusion is going to be the same. If you want to beat this VP team as OG, you've got to have more pressure on, more pressure on the lanes. This this kind of support duo, I feel like it's shooting yourself in the foot right now. And in addition to it, it's not only that the support duo wasn't that great, the, the course are greedy as well. Mag off lane takes a bit of time, Medusa safe lane, and the storm mid. Everyone needs farm, nobody can really make plays. VP take full advantage of the map. This was a very one-sided game. OG showed what their lineup can do. It wasn't like they made it super easy for VP, but at the same time, you never really felt like VP were going to lose control of this one yeah. compared to game one. Yeah, like even like with most games, I sit there going, oh, you got a mag RP, like you got him power buff up on two range heroes. Okay, maybe not so great. Uh, where was the magic going to come? And well, there was a little bit of an avenue for it, but VP shut it down and made some magic of their own. Can't wait for game four.